Um, so I'm on the local farmer council. My name's Sam Horrocks and I'm farming just, just south of Hunterville. Not far from Sam and Sophie Hurley, who are speaking to you now. Can't quite hear Sam duck shooting, but I can hear when he comes to the pub. And um, Sam and Sophie are third generation farmers up the Turakina Valley, which is a valley, big valley running out of Hunterville. Uh, Sophie has previously worked in various marketing and sales roles and hoped one day utilise these skills with, without having to do a two hour commute every day. Um, and Sam is responsible for running the uh, breeding block of Papua Nui Estate. And in 2020 they launched Honest Wolf, which make uh, everyday goods made from the wool from Papua Nui Estate. And they're going to share their story of their company and the journey of how it started and where they hope it's going to go in the future. And they're calling it Utilising Nature's Wonder Product and Spreading the Goodness of Wool. So, Sam and Sophie Hurley. Hi everyone. Gosh, it's a bit scary standing up here on my own, but hopefully we can get Sam up here soon. But I um, thank you for having us here with you all today. I am Sophie and this is Sam Hurley, handing around a few pamphlets for you. Um, so yes, as Sam mentioned, we are both farming up to the Turakina Valley near Hunterville. And this afternoon we're going to run you through a bit of a background of our family farming operation. A brief history of the wool industry and our business we have recently launched called Honest Wolf. We will run you through how it all ties together and to in turn have a better return on our wool we are producing and the hopes we have for the industry in the future. We hope that our discussions today provide inspiration to those of you that have amazing ideas of how to add value to your current businesses and to give you the confidence to go and get those ideas out to the world. We hope to showcase to you that location isn't a barrier and, we, and how we have actually used it to our advantage to, con to connect with our consumers all over the world. We are firstly going to play you a condensed version of an on-farm story we filmed with Farmers Weekly in December last year. It will provide you with a bit of an insight into the land we're lucky enough to be living on, which has been in Sam's family for three generations. It will give you a brief introduction into our farming business, Papua New Estate and Honest Wolf. Meat is definitely still our biggest income earner, but once upon a time wool did used to be a large part of the income, and over time that slowly declined. To see the price that many farmers have been getting is not of equal value to the, the product itself. There is a big push behind wool in the country at the moment. We see there will be a turning point where wool's qualities will be realised by a larger market. Okay, are we ready to go? We're Sam and Sophie Hurley running a sheep and beef operation up the Turakina Valley. Papano Estate is a sheep and beef breeding finishing operation, wintering 25,000 ewes alongside a beef trading operation. We've been farming this hill country since the late 40s, starting from my grandfather, Ray Hurley. We've all just followed in his footsteps down from my father, and now to me and Sophie, Sophie and I and our son Harry are part of a wider family business called Papanoa Estate, which the Hurley, fa um, Hurley family has been farming for over 70 years, starting with Grandfather Ray. The family, the family business includes both breeding and finishing country and is just over 5,000 hectares. My father Andy and my brother Jack look after the finishing side of the business, which is based near Cheltenham, just out of Fielding. Soph and I have been back on the family farm for the last six years and we are currently looking after the sheep and beef breeding part of the business which is located in the hills of the Turakina Valley, 30 minutes north of Hunnival, which is a part of the world that Sophie didn't realise existed before we met. <laughs> Soph is also from a farming family in Wanaka and we met through mutual friends while she was working various marketing roles in Auckland and while I was shepherding in Gizzi. As you've heard, Papua Estate winters 25,000 ewes with the progeny sent to the finishing farms to be fattened. 
Alongside this, we run a cattle trading policy, which means we buy in yearlings through to two-year-olds, predominantly tra traditionally bred cattle. These are grown out on the hills to also be finished on the flats. They play an essential role in helping clean up the pastures over the winter, ensuring good quality grass to come through in the spring months. On the station, we have a team of 10, of 10 around us, which includes various shepherd roles, a married couple who are the general shepherd and station cook, who have been farming with us for over 30 years. A big team around us, all playing their part in helping run Papanui Estate. As many, of you, as many of you will know, one of the greatest economic booms in the history of New Zealand was the strong wool boom in the 1950s. It was at this time it made up 40% of our country's export revenue. The boom, started, the boom started because of the United States entering the Korean War. They brought up huge reserves of wool and the price tripled almost immediately. For many farmers, the wool fibre produced was the main part of the farming income. Since then, the prices within the strong wool industry have steadily declined. And to put it simply, farmers haven't been receiving the equal return to the value of the product itself, and it has become a forgotten fibre. For the first time in my family's sheep farming history, and for many farmers around the country, sharing has come at a cost to our business. Instead of it being the large part of our farming income, it has now been written off as an animal health cost. A lot of people don't realise that you need to share the sheep for their health and comfort as it's an essential part of the animal welfare. Sheep don't shed their coats, so if they're not shorn, the excess wool causes discomfort, overheating and the possibility of being cast. Shearing also provides, avoids the possibilities of fly strike and infections. However, today we are not here to dive into the woes of, wool, of the wool industry but in fact are here to share with you what we are doing and the hope we can be a small part of the solution of the industry as it, is, as it stands today. With our wool traditionally leaving the farm destined to go solely into carpet production, we knew that there are more ways nature's wonder product could be utilised. There are so many untapped opportunities for strong wool. So in 2018, we took things in our own hands to look into various options of what else could, we could do with the incredible fibre. It was at the same time that plastic bags were slowly being phased out of the country in retail outlets. Supermarkets and large retailers were no longer able to provide a plastic bag to carry your goods. So they were seeking alternatives to use, and so was the consumer. This was a move that was needed to move towards a cleaner green in New Zealand. It was during this phase out that we saw an opportunity for our wool. We had the idea to use our U-wool clip and get it made into wool felt a sturdy, strong finished material that will hold large weights and have a smooth finish. We believe this felt would be the perfect material to use to create a new reusable shopping bag. It would be made from a biodegradable, renewable fibre. What more could anyone ask for? So, we explored our idea by talking with our wool buyer at the time to see if he could put us in touch with someone that could help explore our idea. We were put in touch with one or two companies in New Zealand who could felt wool. However, not the type of felt we needed to make our bags we were looking to produce. Here we were faced with obstacle number one. Who in New Zealand can put our ideas to reality and create samples for us? The answer at the time, nobody. The machinery that was once here had now vanished or was no longer in use. So we were forced to look internationally and landed on India, a very long way away from the hills of the Turakina Valley. It seemed a logistical nightmare to not only figure out how to get our wool all the way across to the other side of the world, but to create samples through language barriers and time zones and to ensure we had an efficient supply chain if it all went ahead. We were diving into a world that neither of us had any experience in. Freight, logistics and supply chain management were all new to us. So we're designing a product range, business management and opening an online store. We started with getting various prototypes made, which we can show you now. It's been a journey. Uh, so yeah, so we started with getting various prototypes made of the replacement shopping bag. Sam will pass those around for you to have a look at. This took a long time to get right until we were happy and with the strength and quality of the felt we had made with our wool, as well as the design of the bag itself. As you can see, it was a work in progress. 
After finalising our first product, it opened up the opportunities on the range of products we could produce with our wool felt. Sam's going to hand around the end result as well. So now it was about containing those ideas and choosing a market to enter that would help to be a part of the solution. A solution for our wool and a solution also for the environment. So two years later, in March 2020, we were ready. However, it turned out not to be, as of course a worldwide pandemic began just as we were about to initially to launch. Another rather large obstacle in the road of getting our wool to the world. In June, a few months later, we were finally ready to launch what had been in the pipeline for a few years. Firstly, one of the main questions we get asked, what is the meaning behind our name? To put it simply, we're using honest materials and telling an honest story about how these materials are farmed and the processes of how an honest wolf product comes to be. Wolves communicate, collaborate, and share knowledge across generations. Like a wolf, we are learning from previous generations and are adapting to the environment around us. Like our generations before us, we aim to leave the land we are lucky enough to be looking after with our own stamp and adding to the story. We aim to be leaders among the pack in using wool in a new alternative way and give hope to the wool industry as we feel a great link to the industry through, both of our, through previous generations on both sides of our family. Family's hard work within it. Honest Wolf can be defined as your sustainable solution within the luggage and accessories market. We are your alternative option to the synthetic materials that are used in this category. Our product range includes weekender bags, tote bags, laptop sleeve, wallets and caps to name a few. Although we haven't previously had any design experience, we have enjoyed creating our range to fit within the needs of our lives. For example, when we travel, we always like to have carry-on luggage, so our weekender bag from the beginning of the design stage had to fit within the measurements to do so. We also thought it would be super handy to have a separate com compartment for your shoes away from your clean clothes, so we made a special shoe pocket in the weekender bag for them. In our totes, to help with organisation, we have made a pocket for various items usually lost at the bottom of your bag. So we have pockets for your phone, laptop, drink bottle and a hook for your keys. After the initial idea of the casual shopper, we had a vision for building out our range to be a part of everyday lives for everyday people. Consumers are ever demanding of more sustainable options in various aspects of their lives. And within the luggage and accessories category, there have been minimal options for them that are fashionable yet environmentally friendly. Our range fills this gap in the market as the consumer is aware of where the wool for their products is from, how it is farmed and how it fits within their fashionable desires that makes them a proud owner of an Honest Wolf product. Honest Wolf has created a whole new opportunity for our farm wool. No longer does our wool leave the farm and we don't know where it ends up. We have created a full circle with our wool, which we will explain in more detail in the upcoming slides. Pa Papua New Estate is currently producing 130,000 kilos of ewe wool each year. Our ewes are shorn twice a year, once in December, January and again in May, June. The wool was then sent across to Napier to be scoured. Once the wool is cleaned, it is then sent to India by sea shipment to start the manufacturing process. When completed, it is shipped back to the farm and made available on our online store where customers can order directly. We ship across the country and to Australia with growing demand for us to ship into other countries, which is very exciting for us. Our products are currently all stored in our spare living room of our house, which are packed up each day for the rural mailmen to come and collect. This could be anywhere from 10 to 40 orders a day. Our products are wrapped in tissue paper and tied in wool. Inside each parcel includes a story card, which you have seen in front of you, and a handwritten note. Each note is a personal thank you to every customer, thanking them for their purchase and thanking them for supporting the wool industry. We also remind them that they have made a sustainable purchase that they can be proud to own or gift. The manufacturing process begins with our wool being dyed into our colour range. At the moment, we have six different colours. Midnight, forest green, taupe, navy, caramel and grey. This process can take a few months due to the drying process it requires. 
When completed, it is then off to be filtered. We use a process called needle punching, and it is then compressed into fill. Needle punching is a process by which fibres are mechanically entangled to produce a non-woven fabric. The punched wool then gets steamed and passed through compressing rollers. This process ensures a durable wool finished material is produced that is strong enough to form our range of products. The last part of, of the manufacturing process is our filtered wool and the leather coming together to create the shape and design to, to our bags. We source our leather from a company called New Zealand Luxury Group. They provide the most premium of New Zealand leathers. We have chosen to add, we have chosen to add leather to our bags for a few reasons. The pairing of leather alongside our felt works well as are both natural materials sourced locally. We have designed the range with the leather in place in certain areas of our products in a, to add protection as well as style. Our aim one day is to use our own leather so the product is fully sourced from our farm. The process of the wool getting shorn, leaving the farm and returning back to the farm into, into a product to sell can take up to six months. So we usually have something sitting in each stage of the supply chain, supply chain to ensure we can meet demand. However, this has become challenging due to re recent outbreaks of COVID in India and is something we are trying to find for solutions for at the moment. Living up the valley in the middle of the North Island wouldn't seem like your first place to launch a business. However, we have used this to our advantage to be able to connect with our consumers in various ways and bring them on farm to learn about our farming business and to showcase behind the scenes of how our sheep are farmed and in turn how the wool for our products is grown. We have, choos we have chosen not to wholesale for this reason. To only sell online may seem like we are cutting our sales opportunities and I guess it is an argument to be had. However, for our business we want to continue to have a direct relationship with our consumers, to continue to showcase to them that the story behind their products and to build trust with them. A way of doing this is through the power of social media. We have enjoyed educating what happens on farm at various times of the year, such as lambing, shearing, docking, mustering on horses or general farm life. It is important for us to show the animal welfare so our consumers that haven't previously had a connection to a rural background can be assured that the materials that are in the Honest Wolf products they are buying aligns with the honest part of our name. We will ensure to be using honest materials farmed in a sustainable way. We also showcase the whole process behind the scenes of what happens with Honest Wolf, whether it be manufacturing videos, designing of products, or juggling running a business among family life. Social media has also given us the ability to get direct and instant feedback from our followers on our product range. This has allowed us to adapt and develop products to suit our audience and make various improvements along the way, such as adding in an extra drink bottle holder, rolled handers, handles for added comfort, and leather trim around the edges for a more aesthetically pleasing finish. We also ensure a connection with our consumers through the lining inside each of our bags. It is detailed with a topographic map of Papua New Estate, which is the background of the slides, which includes the name of each paddock on the farm. A design feature that we chose to add to help represent the story of Honest Wolf and to ensure our products always remain connected with the land where, where the wool is grown wherever in the world they may end up. Since launching Honest Wolf, it has introduced us to many clever people around the country that are also trying to find new ways of working with wool to help the industry get to where it should be. It has taken us to places we never thought we would be, like here, talking to you all today. We believe this is only just the beginning for our brand and the industry is on the tip of a turning point with very ideas people have for the fibre. In the short term, we are looking to expand our range within the luggage and accessories category. This will be in the form of new, new colours and new products that complement our existing product range. We are looking to refine our processes in order to run a smoother business that isn't out of our spare living room. We are looking into options of distribution centres for our products so that our time can be spent growing the brand and sharing the message of the goodness of wool instead of the physical labour required to send our orders out. We aim to expand our customer base further into New Zealand and Australian markets and ultimately ultimately use more and more of our wool. 
So far, we've used 20,000 kilos of our own wool for Honest Wolf, and we hope in the short term to use our full annual wool clip from our ewes. We are just in the process of having 16,000 kilos of wool scoured to put towards our upcoming production runs. We are also in the beginning stages of understanding if we can manufacture our range right here in New Zealand. We have learnt a lot about the manufacturing processes since we had first had those conversations in 2018 and we were told it wasn't possible. And we hope to be able to have our products made here in New Zealand. This would save on shipping and importing costs, which are, huge, which are a huge cost to our business, let alone the time spent on shipping to India and back. The latest outbreak of COVID in India has driven us to try and make this happen sooner than planned, as we currently have a lot of our stock either stuck halfway through the manufacturing processes or at holding ports in the ports of New Delhi. We have customers asking every day when we will be restocked with various items, and it is a demand we would like to be ahead of. In the long term for Honest Wolf, our goal is to be a part of other New Zealand brands promoting wool to an international market. We hope to one day not only be using our wool, annual wool clip from Papineau Estate, but also to use other farmers' wool, and hope we can help towards a better farm gate price for all farmers. Ultimately, getting the returns nature's wonder product deserves. We're optimistic that wool will make a big comeback as we see its infinite potential as part of a more sustainable future. And now, we have got a wee giveaway. Um, to give away one of our casual shoppers, which is our first product that we came up with. Um, and we can leave this sitting up here for a little bit and write down notes. And the question is, is how many casual shoppers do we get out of one bale of wool, which when you use a standard bale weight? Um, and there's a couple of hints here. So wool, uh, the wool yield, when it is scaled, as a lot of you all know, is, is at 75%. When felting, you lose another 20% of the wool weight. And one casual shopper is the equivalent of 0.75 kgs of felt of wool. So the first person to come to us with the right answer, this is work down here already, um, is will win one of our casual shopper bags. Cool, and that's us. Who's Not that? far away. Not far away. <laughs> it's closer than what we've got, so. 190 kgs. It's your standard bale weight. <laughs> Pardon? What, what was that? No. Yes, well done. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where is that, that is currently going around here somewhere, so someone you, might have already taken off. You just steal it off someone. <laughs> one fifty. Yeah, one fifty-one to be exact, but he got both. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So I guess we've got some questions. Should we just start from the top? Yeah, I guess so. Um, well, obviously, uh, what percent of our wool clip goes towards Honest Wolf? Um, so far, we have used about 20,000 kilos, and, um, and there's, we have currently another 16,000 being um, scoured right now in Napier. So, I mean, um, yeah, we're hoping in the next, if we can carry on, if we can carry on, we're hoping in the, in the next very short term that, term that we'd be using our full wool clip. Which is 130,000 kilos, 30, yeah, of you will produce, yeah. Uh, where can products be ma made but Honest Wolf be purchased? So we are just an online store. Um, as we mentioned, we have chosen uh, this option. We've, we've had oh, many people wanting to wholesale, um, and it, we've chosen just to go online at the moment. Um, honestwolf.co.nz um, and to keep, the, um, to keep the connection with our customers and to be able to build the relationship with them and, and um, yeah, that's what I've done that way. Other opportunities for wool. Um, there's, I guess for us, we've chosen to 
be in the luggage and accessories category. Um, we get various messages um, every week from people suggesting other products we could make, um, whether it be clothing or other sorts of bags or um, various baby products. Or um, and it's about uh, for us, it's about choosing um, products that align with what we're trying to do and not con not confuse the consumer about our brand. Um, there is opportunities for so many things, anything you see in front of you. Um, probably you could try and see if you could turn it into wool and we'd be happy to talk to you about it because it um, everyone's got some clever ideas and what, what scared us the most at the beginning and, um, was probably the fear of the unknown because you didn't know what you were getting yourselves into and, and what you didn't know what you didn't know. So um, we, yeah, we'll be happy to help anyone that has got an idea. Do you see a requirement to change genetics to, to meet this business? <laughs> um, currently, we have a, um, a ewe breed of half Kelso and half Romney. And at the moment, um, with a micron of around 33 to 35, and for our felting process, the, um, the micron we were sitting is perfect for strength and durability. Um, definitely, um, so at, at this stage, I think um, we are, that's essentially how we started on this wolf, wasn't it, So, Like, we wanted to make um, something out of our wool that it wasn't, and so we felt that... It that was. That it was. Yeah, that it was, yeah, sorry. <laughs> so we felt we needed to make something within um, that was going to be useful in that, in that micron range, and, um, and this, is, this is where we came to. Which is a follow-up question, actually, with um, are our products mixed with other natural fibres? So no. So it's um, all 100% all our wool is 100% wool. All our products are 100% wool, and um, yeah, backs up that we don't need to change anything from our wool. We're just utilising what we've got. And no, so we're not using uh, lamb wool. We are using our U clip, clip, which is about 32 to 35 micron. Uh, starting a business like this is financially front-loaded. Yes, it is. So it was quite a risk, um, and a risk that went over a couple of years. Um, so I was working at the time for Farmers Weekly, you can see I'm obviously on the farm. Um, so it was great to be able to do both, uh, work through our idea while also getting an income from a business, uh, from a job as well. Um, but yeah, we have, um, it has been well received in the market, I guess you could put it, um, so far. Um, we have managed to be able to cover. get, yeah, cover our costs. Um, and all our money is just going back into redevelopment of our products to keep keep improving them and, and put in larger orders because our, we can't currently meet demand at the moment. Um, so our, we just need to get the confidence, which we have, um, to put in larger orders. And that's um, where, we're, where our spend is going at the moment. Vision for Honest Wool from the next five years, you want me to answer that one? <laughs> um, I guess something we're trying to work out at the moment because it's changing rather quickly. Um, with our production, uh, it is something that, as we mentioned, we're trying to, trying to pull back into New Zealand if possible. We're at the very beginning stages of even figuring out whether that is something that we can do. Um, so that would be a goal for us to be able to do that. Uh, in the next five years, we want to... Uh, ensure that we have market in New Zealand and Australia. Um, we, we look after that ma market at first and then dive into the international market. We are already getting um, various orders from overseas at the moment. Um, we are, on our website, we are actually only shipped to New Zealand and Australia, but we get various message emails and uh, social media messages of how to get our products international. And um, that is a focus that we'd like to have in the next few years. Um, and I guess uh, it would be great to be able to have them at various points around the world. Um, get New Zealand wool, and not only our wool, but also other farmers' wool, if, um, if we can. Don't we Your turn now. <laughs> um, well, yeah, uh, what is the price you'd pay to farmers per kg? Yeah, we've um, looked into this to make sure that our business going forward can be sustainable for not only our business, but 
for um, other farmers. And um, I mean, yeah, we've looked at various prices, but I mean, we're happy um, uh, that we'd be very comfortable with sort of sitting around that um, three to five dollars at this stage. A year on, how has the business gone compared with how you thought it might? Um, yeah, well, I guess we're not even actually a year on yet. We're, we launched in June last year, so oh, actually we're in May now, aren't we? So yeah, pretty close. But um, it, it's definitely exceeded our expectations. Uh, from the uh, support of the rural industry, a lot of um, we've had a lot of backing by um, the products and the story sells itself. Um, we're just like any other farmer in New Zealand and, and wanting to do something else with our wool. So it, um, it's been um, picked up by consumers in New Zealand and, and we have been able to shape our products um, to match the quality that we want to. Uh, so it's, it's all happened a lot quicker than we thought. We, we are ready to ship it out of our home and, and not have bags around the house. And um, it's, yeah juggling family life and the way we're doing things at the moment. It is um, all caught up with us, so we're looking, looking at growth opportunities to how we can continue to keep it growing um, in a sustainable way, I guess. Um, do you make a profitable amount from your business that also covers the price to share and produce your products? Well, um, currently we are paying the farm um, market market rate as a lot of the um, our income is going back into like Sophie said into redevelopment um, marketing um, and obviously with um, looking at talking with New Zealand companies and and how we can make them here and um, having a go at doing that and it, so it all costs money and um, so obviously in the long run we want to have a business that can stand on its own two feet um, so we feel like it's important to um, get these things um, right at the start and we're really keen on getting, um, investing the money into getting our word out there and of just the message about wool and, and hopefully supporting other people to do it and um, we know like, there's other people going to be talking to you today that are doing amazing things with wool. Um, so it's all just about everyone having a crack and, and there are a lot, uh, a lot more potential. How do you manage negative social media? Yeah, that is a balance. Um, that is something that we are very careful about um, getting the, the right messages across on our social media. We've got people from all walks of life following us. We are tapping into the urban market, so a lot of people don't know about the rural industry and, and have previously thought that sharing might have been an animal. What's it called? Harm. Harm. <laughs> um, and we're all about... Or an animal had to die. For yeah, animal. yeah, and people have thought that an animal had to die to get your wool. So we are just trying to educate as much as we can and any message that we get, we're just... We're just um, front foot. Front foot it as an educational opportunity, I guess. And um, have you approached, approached successful New Zealand companies? Um, so Allwoods is actually a model that we're trying to follow in terms of... Um, the way that they sell their products, so you'll also know that they don't wholesale either, and they hold on to their story. They um, are a model that we would try like um, to follow their pathway, um, but it is some, we actually haven't contacted them yet, but um, if anyone knows how, that would be great. <laughs> Why aren't you using using the lamb's wool? Um, because, oh, you answered that one, here you go. <laughs> um, well, at the time, in 2018, when we were looking at trying to add value to our wool, um, we were still getting $5 a kilo for our lamb and we didn't think, um, you know, we thought that was still a good return and so really we were looking in other avenues of the wool clip and how we could add value to that. and. Um, so at the time, that was that was ticking along quite nicely. So, yeah. So that's why. And so we wanted to use something that our and and uh, the lamb wool is a small clip of the majority of our wool. So we felt like we really wanted to um, try and find something that our main U clip would fit into. 
Would you look into other, oh. Oh yeah, yeah. cool. Yeah, welcome. <laughs> Great. Oh, <laughs> Well, thank you very much, guys. Um, certainly it's great to see young people taking initiative to um, solve a problem instead of just sitting at home complaining about it. And I think it's certainly highlighted the um, importance of having a story to go hand in hand with a product. Um, and we've just got a small token to say thank you to you both. Um, Sam would probably prefer a Tui, but he's going to have one. Cheers, Sam. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Sam. Thank you very much.